Okay, welcome everybody. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so let's just start with a prayer. Lord God, our Father, we thank you that we can read your word together, that we can learn about your purpose with this world, that we can learn about the good gifts that you have given throughout history for your work to be done. And Father, we pray that you'll help us now as we read these things and learn about them, that you'll help us to grow in knowledge and love of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, we're going to launch straight in um, by looking at some of the passages which tell us about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who were here last week might remember that Jonathan was talking more generally about the topic of the Holy Spirit. So he was talking about how the Holy Spirit is how God works in the world through creation and through his word, the Bible. So what we're going to do today is to focus on one aspect of the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's the idea of the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at our Bibles. Um, we're going to go to Mark chapter 16. Okay, let me share this on screen. Okay, Mark chapter 16, and we're going to look at verses 15 to 20. Now, this is the time uh, when Jesus has been raised from the dead. Uh, he's about to go to heaven. And he has a message for his followers before he goes. Okay, in verse 15, this is what he says. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. <laughs> آنان به دیشان آنگاه به دیشان فرمود به سر تا سر جهان برایید و خبر خوش را به همه خلایق موعظه کنید هر که ایمان آورد و تعمید گیرد نجات خواهد یابد اما هر که ایمان نیاورد مخفی خواهد شد و این آیات همراه هم ایمانداران خواهد بود به نام من دیوها را بیرون خواهند کرد یعنی زبانهای تازه سخن خواهند گفت و مارها را با دستهایشان خواهند گرفت و هرگاه زهری کشنده بنوشند گزندی به آنها نخواهد رسید و دستا بر بیماران نخواهند نهاد و آنان شفا خواهند یافت so this was something that Jesus promised to the disciples. He was going to give them miraculous powers. And so they would be able to do things like raise dead people. Um, they'd be able to pick up a snake and it wouldn't be able to poison them. Okay, so that's what Jesus promised, um, and those were the, some of the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we go over to Acts chapter 2, 
then we find this promise being fulfilled. Chapter 2. Yes. Amar Rasulullah Baba Do, Berunja. Okay, and we're going to take quite a lot of this chapter because this is a really key incident in what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is a few weeks after Jesus went to heaven. And so the disciples uh, are gathered together and they're waiting for Jesus' promise to be fulfilled. So let's start with the first uh, three, uh, the first four verses. So Acts chapter two, verses one to four. Yeah. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a, mighty, a, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. امون رسولان باب دو آیه یک تا صفحه 1616 چون روز پنتیکاس فرا رسید همه یک دل در یک جا جمع بودن که ناغاخ صده همچون صده وزش تنبادی از آسمان آداخانه ای را که در آن نشسته بودن به تمامی پر کرد آنگاه زبانه های دیدن همچون زبانه های آتش که تقسیم شد بر هر یک از ایشان قرار گرفت سپس همه از روح القدس پر گشتن و آن گونه که روح به ایشان قدرت تکلم میبخشید به زبان های دیگر سخن گفتن آغاز کردند so this was something completely new this had never happened before in history God gave these people a power that enabled them to speak other languages. Okay, so I mean they probably spoke Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, you know, naturally, you know, those those were the languages that they'd learnt as children, but now they were able to speak other languages in addition. <laughs> And we can see what they were able to speak when we read on. So let's have a look at verses um, 5 to 8. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? آیه پنج تا هشت نخون. در آن روزها یهودیان خدا تاس از همه مملکت زیر آسمان در اورشلیم به سر می‌بودند. چون این صدا برخاست جماعتی گرد آمده غرق شگفتی شدند. So it's clear what these miraculous languages were. They were real languages from other countries. And notice that the people who hear this are surprised because they say these people are Galileans. They are from Galilee. And that's probably saying that they knew that people in Galilee were not well educated. It was not the capital city, it was the countryside. So these were people who probably had never studied as adults, they'd probably never traveled outside their country, and yet they're able to speak in all sorts of languages. خب پس میشه گفت دقیقا نه زیاد مسافرت همون چنانی رفتم و اینکه نه تحصیلات خیلی زیادی زیادی دارم و 
میبینیم که الان خیلی دقیقا راحت دارن اینجا به زبانه دیگه صحبت میکنن Okay, just to remind people to mute themselves, I think we've got a bit of interference from, uh, from people unmuted, so just check that you're muted. Okay, now, still in Acts chapter 2, let's have a look at uh, what, these, what these languages are that they can speak. Okay, so this is verses, uh, verses 9 to 11. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. <laughs> پارتا و ماتا ایلامیان، مردمان بین و نهرین یهودی و کابادوکیه، پونتوس و آسیا، فریجیه، پانفیلیه و مصر و نبایی لیوی متصل و غیروان و نیز زائران رومی، چه یهودی و چه یهودی شده و همچنین همچن مردمان کرد و عربستان و همین میشنم که اینان به زبان ما متح اعمال عظیم خدا را میگوید. Now, it's interesting that the first three are languages of Iran. Parthia, Mead and Elamites are all part of today's Iran. و چیز جالبش اینه که پارت، ماد و ایلام سه تا دقیقا از بحثای ایران حساب بشه دیگه قبلا. So here were people from Galilee in Israel and yet they could speak an ancestor of Farsi. و حالا بگون آدمای از شهر جلیل هست اینجا که دارن به فارسی صحبت می‌کنن مثلا این افراد. Okay so it would be if you no know, it would be like if I was an apostle if I was Peter or James and John I've never been to Iran. But suddenly I say, Amir, uh, you're not needed because the, the spirit has now given me the power to speak Farsi and I can just give the talk in Farsi instead. Okay. So that's what the Holy Spirit gift of tongues was. And let's just look at one more verse from this chapter, verse 12. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? And so we're going to think about that for a few moments and think about what this means. Why did God give this Holy Spirit gift of tongues? Well, remember the previous passage we looked at in Mark was all about how the disciples had to go into all of the world to preach. Now, for the disciples, there were two problems with that. The first problem is, as Jewish people, they try to keep separate from other nations. And so the idea of them traveling all around the world, talking to other people who weren't Jewish, would have been something that they struggled with because they felt that, you know, it was about Israel and Israel were God's people and Israel were God's purpose. So by giving this gift, it showed Jewish people that God's message was for all nations. And so you didn't have to learn Hebrew to read the Bible. You didn't have to become Jewish in order to come close to God. 
مثلا لازم نبود که حتما یهودی باشی تا بتونی به خدا نزدیکتر باشی and the second problem that these disciples would have had is they have never been outside Israel before how can they go to Rome and Greece and Turkey and speak to people when they don't know their language و مشکل دوم اینه که از اینا تا تا الان که حالا تو زندگیشون هر چند سالشون هست بیرون از مملکت خودشون نرفتن یعنی نه به ترکیه رفتن از یونان نه روم و خب مشکل اینه که برن اونجا چجوری صحبت کنن با اینا وقتی زبانشون رو بلد نیستن and so they needed this power so that the good news of Jesus could spread from Israel into all of the countries around it. پس به این قدرت نیاز داشتن مسلما و اینکه حالا میتونن برن و خبر خوش ایسا رو به همه جا و در تا سر کشور و دنیا پرکنده کنن. So this helps us to see that these gifts of the Holy Spirit were given for a particular reason, a particular purpose. ولی بازم علت داشت داده شدن این عطایا و قدرت رول بوس به اینا یک دلیل خیلی خاص و ویژه داره. Okay, now let's go forward in time a few years and we're going to look at the letter of uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, first of Corinthians. بریم یه چند سال جلوتر و در زمان سفر کنیم بریم اول قرنتیان. So this is a little bit later and now the churches have been established and Paul is writing to a church in Greece. And in this church, they are using these gifts of the Spirit. Um, but it's actually causing problems in the church, and so Paul writes three chapters to explain what the gifts are and how they should be used. Okay, now, I don't, this should be coming up in uh, English and Farsi on my screen, and it's not. Let me just, give me a moment and I'll share my screen in just a sec. Okay, it doesn't seem to be quite working for me. I'll just show, have to show you the English and Amir can read the Farsi. Okay, so um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse, verses um, 4 to 10. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Amir, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, Bobe, that was the chart of the Oye Yosa. Bori, at Oye Gunaguna. اما روح همان است خدمت ها گوناگون اما سرور همان است عمل ها گوناگون اما همان خداست که همه را در همه به عمل آورد ظهور ظهور روح به هر کس برای منفعت همگان داده می شود به یکی به وسیله روح کلام حکمت داده می شود و به دیگری واسطه همان روح کلام معرفت و به شخص دیگر به وسیله همان روح ایمان و به دیگری با سازد همان روح عطایای شفا دادن به شخص دیگر قدرت انجام معجزات داده می شود به دیگری نقوت و به دیگری تشخیص ارواح و باز به شخص دیگر سخن گفتن به انواع زبان‌های غیر بخشیده می‌شود و به دیگری ترجمه زبان‌های غیر اما همه اینها را همان یک روح به عمل می‌آورد و آنها را به اراده خود تقسیم کرده به هر کس می‌بخشد 
So this shows that it wasn't just being able to speak in languages, there were other gifts, other skills the spirit gave. Okay, so for example, um, some people had the word of wisdom. Okay, so um, presumably that meant that they were able to uh, teach wisely, that they were given a, a, a gift which enabled them to teach the word of God in a, in a wise way. Now, other people were able to uh, heal. They were able to cure sicknesses. Um, they were even able to raise the dead, as we as we saw in the promise from Jesus. And we we see several examples of those in the Acts of the Apostles. Okay, we, we get told stories of the apostles being able to cure people's sicknesses and even being able to raise people from the dead. Now, why were these gifts given? Well, again, we get the reason in verse 7. Okay, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all, for the benefit of everybody. So God gave these gifts in order to benefit the, the ecclesia, the church of believers. And we can see that if we read on into the chapter. Okay, so verse 12 says, For as the body, which means that the body of believers, the church, as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Okay, so those gifts were given as a way of building up the church, of uh, helping people preach, uh, and helping people in the difficulties that they faced in those early years. And it was also a very powerful witness to the world around them that God was working in these people. Because if people didn't believe what they were preaching, um, then there was the evidence of the signs that they could do, uh, which showed that their teaching was from God. Now, how did people get these gifts? Where did they come from? So let's have a look at Acts chapter 8. Okay, and this gives us a, a case study of how people received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's let's go step by step through 
Um, Acts chapter 8, verses 12 to 20. So, Acts chapter 12, 8, verse 12. When they, this is the people in Samaria, when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Uh, and Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. That's verses 12 and 13. So here is a man called Philip and he's preaching the good news of Jesus and he's doing miracles. اینجا فیلیپوس رو داریم که یکی از شاگردا صدارا داره اون معجزه تا انجام میده و تو دقیقا بشارت and people believe him and are baptized مردم هم ایمان میاره و قصه تمید هم میگیرن okay let's see what happens next بریم ببینیم چی میشه so verses 14 and 15 says now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just notice what we've got here. We've got Philip, who has the Holy Spirit and is able to do miracles. But the people who he has baptized don't have the Holy Spirit. And so Peter and John, who are the who are some of the apostles, who are the kind of leaders who have been appointed by Jesus, they have to come to Samaria to see these people. اینجا پتروس و یوحنا که گفتین دو تا شاگرد حالا میان اونجا تا مردم Okay and the reason that they're coming um, is that they are praying uh, that these people will receive the holy spirit و نیوکلی که در نوشته که دارن دعا میکنن که حالا روح القدس به اینا نازل بشه Okay um, now let's keep reading so verses 60 uh, uh, verses uh, 17 and 18 okay then they laid hands on them so this is peter and john laid hands on these new believers and they received the holy spirit and when simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles hands the holy spirit was given he offered them money <laughs> چون شم اون دید که با دست نهادن رسولان روح القدس عطا می شود مبلغی پیش آورد. So this shows us that people receive the Holy Spirit when the apostles put their hands on to these new believers. در میونه که روح القدس زمانی که دستشون رو میذاشن حالا هر جای بدن سرشونه اینا دریافت میکنن روح القدس. Okay, Philip couldn't give them the Holy Spirit. It was only Peter and John who could. And we can see that Simon realized this was a special gift that the apostles had because that's why he wants to buy it, because he can see it's something extra that other believers don't have. Now let's keep reading because um, verse 19 to 21 says, uh, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Then Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. 
به رسولان گفت به من نیز این اقتدار رو ببخشید تا به هر کس که دست بگذارم زورگوز رو بیابد پشوس گفت زرت با خودت نابود خواهد شد نابود باد زیرا پنداش عطای خدا رو میتونم با پول خرید تو در این خدمت هیچ سهم و قسمتی نداره زیرا دلت در حضور خدا راست نیست so, all of them were able to receive the Holy Spirit. همشون قدرت روحوس رو دریافت کردن. But only the apostles were able to put their hands on people and give that Holy Spirit to others. ولی فقط رسولا بودن، شاگردا بودن که میتونستن دستشون رو بزنن رو بقیه و این حتای رو به بقیه هم اهدا کنن. Now, we do find a couple of exceptions to that in the New Testament, but as a general principle, the um, the Holy Spirit could only be passed on by the laying on of the apostles' hands. And so this leaves us with a, a problem and a question because we do not have apostles today. The apostles were a special group of people who had seen Jesus' work and heard his teaching and were witnesses of what he had done. So when they died, there was no one to replace them because there weren't people who had seen Jesus and heard his teaching. و زمانی که اینا دیگه مردن کسی نبود که بخواد جایگزین اینا باشه و دقیقاً کنار عیسی مسیح هم بوده باشه بتونه تعلیماتش رو به اینا بگه. And so it doesn't say it directly in the Bible but our assumption is that when the apostles died then the ability to pass on the holy spirit died with them. و که تو مثلا چیزی راجع به این قضیه نگی ولی خب طبق چیزی که ما میتونیم بعدش کنیم که زمانی که شاگردان مردن قدرت رو رو گفتن دیگه کلا اونجا استوب شده و دیگه از بین رفته Now although we don't find that said directly in scripture we do get some indications, some hints that that's what happened به صورت مستقیم نمیم مثلا یه مدتون شد آقا تموم شد نه یه سری آقا شباید و آقا چیزهای دیگه هستش Okay, come to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 اول بانتون هم 13 And we've already looked at the chapter before, which was all about what the purpose of the Holy Spirit was. And then Paul gives some additional teaching about the Holy Spirit in chapters 13 and 14. Okay, now notice how he starts. Let's read verses 1 and 2. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. ولی محبت نداشته باشن زنگی پرسدا و سنجی پر هیاهو بیش نیستم اگر قدرت نوبت داشته باشم و توانم جمله اسرار و معارف رو درک کنم و اگر چنان ایمانی داشته باشم که بتونم کوه ها رو جابجا کنم اما محبت نداشته باشم هیچم so Paul is showing us that these miraculous gifts even though they were amazing gifts from God weren't the most important thing و در می که این قدرت خارق العاده حالا باز همه چیز اصلی نبود the most important thing as a follower of Jesus was to live lives which showed the love of God and the love of Jesus. And so he goes on in the next few verses to talk about love and what love looks like. Now, notice verses 8, 9, and 10. Hashnoda. Paul says, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. 
For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. محبت هرگز پایان نمیپذیرد اما نبوت ها از میان خواهد رفت و زبان ها پایان خواهد پذیرفت و معرفت زایل خواهد شد زیرا معرفت ما جزئی است و نبوت ما نیز جزئی اما چون کاملایت جزئی از میان خواهد رفت so paul is, t- is, is saying to these people who use the holy spirit gifts he said those holy spirit gifts are going to disappear و پولس رسول که خودش حالا یکی از شاگردا بوده و قدرت شده باشه نمیخواد بهش میگه میگه قرار این بالاخره اینا چون یعنی از بین میره As followers of Jesus you will always have the job of loving and showing love but this time of these gifts is going to finish و در به عنوان شاگرد مسیح باید این عشق و علاقه رو بیشتر نشون و این چیزا رو چون اینا این صحبت کردن به زبان‌های غیر و خیلی چیزا دیگه که حالا قدرت گرباز بوده همش از بین میره. And next is first 10 talks about something which is perfect or complete coming and then the, the what is partial uh, will be will disappear will be done away. هر چیزی هم که داره راجع به اینکه چیز کامل و پرفکت میاد میگه اون وقتی که اون میاد اون چیزی که جزئی هستن و اون تکه از اون هستن خواهند رفت. And I think this is saying that when the when the body of believers, when the church had become established, um, when the the New Testament had been written, then those gifts of the Spirit then passed away. Now, that doesn't mean that they would pass away forever. And in, in fact, we can read in, in Hebrews, we haven't got time to turn there, but in Hebrews talks about these being the powers of the future age. Uh, so that's talking about the kingdom of God, that when Jesus comes back, then these spirit gifts will be used again. And in fact, there's other passages which talk about the pouring out of the spirits around the, ter- the, the time of the return of Jesus. So again, this leaves us with a question because some Christians say, that has already started and the, 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 the miraculous gifts of the Spirit are already being poured out. And okay, so I've, I've met Christians who say, yes, I have the gift of tongues. The Holy Spirit allows me to speak in tongues. و مثلا خود بعدش خودش میگه مثلا میگه من شخصی دیدم که مثلا میگه من قدرت زبان ها دارم قدرت رو رو دارم میتونم زبان های غیر سخن کنم بگم او دی سی گاد هاز گیون می دی گیفت اف هیلینگ اند آی کان یوز مای هولی اسپریت گیفت اف هیلینگ تو کیور پیپل سیکنسز که مثلا میگه یکی میگه مثلا که من قدرت شفا دادن انسان ها دارم میتونم مشکلات شما مریضی هاشون رو بهبود ببخشم So we have to think about what people are saying and compare that to what the Bible is teaching. Let's talk first of all about the gifts of healing. Now, the examples in the first century, um, at the, the time of the apostles, these were healings that were Um, people raised from the dead, uh, people with who were blind being made to see, uh, things like this. There were amazing things which you could not explain in any other way. The types of instances today where people say that they have received uh, the healing of the Holy Spirit often aren't as um, complete, as impressive as some of those. And, for example, some of 
بهشون داده شده زمان بچگیشون بهشون داده شده انگار So for example there have been reports about people being raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit you know in our in our age but when they are investigated it turns out that this isn't true this hasn't happened و مثلا توی زمانه ما مثلا اتفاقی رخ داده که مثلا یه شخص مرده زنده شده حالا مثلا گفتم با قدرت رول بوس و این صحبت ها ولی خب وقتی که تحقیقات انجام دادن نه اصلا همچین چیزی نیست or it turns out that somebody uh, thought that they had been healed from maybe something which was a condition which changed anyway you know uh, for example on conditions like depression or anxiety or pain then the amount that you feel that illness varies over time sorry that was a long one Amir. yeah so could you please repeat that i lost my yeah. connection i'm sorry that's, that's okay um so one of the things that people sometimes um say that they have experienced through the gifts of the holy spirit is uh, relief for conditions which change a lot anyway okay so so for example things like conditions where you feel a lot of pain or you have depression or anxiety those are things which sometimes it's very bad and sometimes it gets better و دوباره مثلا ببخشید من چیز رو از دست دادم متوجه نشدم همه رو ولی چیزی که داره میگه اینه که یه سری مثلا میگن آقا ما دردای خیلی زیاد داریم این استراب استرس و خیلی چیزا مثلا واسه یکی زیاد یه سری کم و حالا یه سری میگن ما اونطوری شفا بدیم و این داستانا and so sometimes people have an amazing experience where they feel a lot better and then it gets worse again and they start to think oh maybe this wasn't the work of the holy spirit after all و وقتی من جوری مثلا میگم مثلا اون چیزی که اینا میگفتن نبوده و اینجوری در واقع پیش نمی رفت حالا این حالا این صحبت ها so what what we often find is that the claims that people make about what they can do through the holy spirit are not as powerful as what we find described in the new testament و اون کارهایی که مردم میان ادعا میکنن که میتونن انجام بدن با از طریق روح القدس اصلا درست نیست یعنی چی میگن صدق نمیکنه با و اینکه با اون چیزایی که توی عهد جدید مثلا در میخونی مثلا دیگه جور در نمیاد Now we have to be very careful we can't say god doesn't do this god never works in that way we can't tell god how god works can we but what we have, do have to do is check that what people tell us uh, fits with what we read in the bible و خب یه چیزی که اصلا ما نمیتونیم به خدا بگیم آقا چه کار بکن چه کار نکن این یه موضوع و این که نمیتونیم ولی چیزی که میتونیم انجام بدیم که وقتی که مردم حرف میزنن ما میگیم بررسیش کنیم آقا این حرفی که این شخص میزنه با کتاب مقدس و کلام خدا یک چی میگن یکی است جور در میاد یا نه Okay I I think that God does heal people and does God, God does bring miraculous things into people's lives but he does that directly he doesn't do it through people laying on of hands through the holy spirit می خدا این کارو انجام میده ولی نه اینکه مثلا از طریق مثلا یه نفر مثلا به اسم الله شخصی مثل ایکس مثلا بیاد اونو دستش مثلا بزنه رو سر اون کسی که مریضه مثلا اون شفا پیدا کنه and so if we we want god's help in our lives we can pray directly to god we don't need a special person to to lay hands on us و ای میخوام واقعا دوستای باشه تو زندگی و نیاز به کمک خدا هم هر چیز دیگه میتونیم به درگاه خدا دعا کنیم مستقیما نه اینکه از یکی دیگه بخوام بیا دستش رو بذارم سر رو شونه اون جای دیگه اون رو شفا پیدا کنیم اوکی لیتس توک فور لیتل بیت ابات دی گیفت اف تانگز بریم اون قدرت اون عطایای زبان های گوناگون on several occasions i have been with uh, other christians who are who say that they are are speaking in tongues و بعدش دور خودش میگه توی یه سری مراسمات خیلی خاص بودن که حالا مثلا با بقیه افراد که از فرقه‌های مختلفی که مسیحیت بودن and it's a very strange experience because suddenly people will start speaking with all of these strange sounds um, and you know it's it's something which is very very unusual something which is very strange و تو اون جمعی که بوده اونم گفت ما به زبان‌های دیگه صحبت صحبت می‌کنیم و یهو مثلا همش شروع می‌کنم به زبان‌های سن دیگه صحبت کردن من گفتم خیلی یه ذره عجیب غریبه که مثلا صدای عجیب غریب میشه حالا متوجه نشو قبول داره صحبت می‌کنه نه There's definitely something happening there when people have that experience. It's a real experience. 
و میگه وقتی داره واقعا این چیز اتفاقی داره رخ میده چون این یه تجربه واقعی دیگه اونجا داره رخ میده اون لحظه But it's not the Holy Spirit gift of tongues. ولی قدرت روز برای تکلم به زبان‌های غیر نیست. And the reason I say that is because it's very different from what we read in Acts, both in how it worked and its purpose. و دلیلت اینکه میگه اون چیزی که من تو امر رسول الله می‌خونم خیلی تفاوت داره با اون چیزی که اونا میگن. Remember on the day of Pentecost, they spoke tongues so that people could understand the message that was taught. و یادتون باشه تو امارستان هم همین یعنی با دو خونی زبانی که زمانی که شروع کردن صحبت کردن افراد مختلف متوجه می‌شدن اینا چی میگن If you go to a church today where they speak tongues they're not doing it in order to teach people in different languages they're doing it because they feel it's an important spiritual experience این کار انجام به خاطر می‌گن که یک چیز خیلی روحانی مهمه توی بقیه کلیساها So okay I'll give you an example Um, I went to visit a church when I lived in Hungary. Um, it, was, uh, it was an international church, but the, uh, the preaching and the reading of the Bible and the singing was all in Hungarian language. All right, in Hungary, you said? Yeah. yeah. و مجلسان رفته بوده و میگه زمانی که رفته بودم مجلسان رفته بودم میدونی کلیسا ملاقات کنم میگه یه کلیسا خیلی دقیقه بین المرابی بوده همه میشناختنش ولی میگه به زبان خودشون صحبت میکردم And because, uh, because it was an international church with lots of different languages then they had translators just like Amir whose job it was to translate the service into different languages و خب به خود اینکه گفتیم بین المرابی بوده و خیلی از افراد مختلف میومد اونجا مترجم داشتن مثلا همونجوری که حالا ما مترجم داریم اونها اونجا اون لحظه مترجم داشتن uh, and they gave me headphones so i could put my headphones on and listen to translation in english و مثلا میگه به خودشم یه دونه هدفون داده بودم و اون مثلا میذاشت و مثلا گوش میداد به تنز... اون ترجمه که به انگلیسی بوده now during that service there was a short time when people started speaking in tongues و میگه توی یک مدت زمان خیلی کمی زمانی بود که همه شروع کردن به صحبت کردن And to me, this showed how clearly there was a very big difference to what they were experiencing and what we have described in the New Testament. Because if they really had the Holy Spirit gift of tongues, they wouldn't need headphones for interpretation. تو اگه واقعا این قدرت صحبت کردن و زبان های مختلف رو داشتن اصلا نیازی به قضیه هدفون این صحبت ها نبود On the day of Pentecost there were no headphones روز پنتیکاست کسی اصلا مترجم نشن کسی هدفون نشه با ترجمه کنه بسه شد The apostles just spoke and everybody could hear in their own language صحبت که رسولان شروع کردن صحبت کردن همه مترجم شد به زبان خودشون um, And We could talk more about this. What I would encourage you to do, if you, if you think that you have experienced this, uh, this gift of tongues, I would really encourage you to read through 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. Because I think when you do that, you can compare what the Corinthian experience was and what people experience today and you can see that they're very different. Now, I'm not saying that people are lying when they have that experience. It's a very real experience that people have. میگه من نمیام بگم اینا دارن دروغ میگن یا خب چیزی که اینا بالاخره دارن تجربه میکنن تو اون لحظه What is interesting is that people in other religions have the same experiences چیزی که خیلی جالب اینه که بقیه افراد توی فرقه های دینی مختلف هم این تجربه یکسان رو دارن So there are certain tribal religions in Africa where people have a very similar experience of speaking in tongues مثلا توی آفریقا یه سری از اون حالا قوم ها و قبیله ها هستن که این صحبت به زبان های غیر مثلا دارن It's not Christian it's just something that is created psychologically through music and dancing and an atmosphere which kind of creates this feeling و یک حس یک 
حس اون واجدی و تشنه یه حسی که اونجا به وجود میاد در سعی حالا رقص موزیک و حالا این داستان Okay, and it exists in some branches of Islam as well. So, you know, in the, in the Sufi sects, in the, among Sufi Muslims, then they sometimes have these kind of similar experiences. That people through music or dancing or other things feel this sense of joy and energy and amazing creativity in hiss khalqat az az tariq ala raqs w musiqi wa in jur chiza un hiss khalaqiyat daqiqat khushali shadi wa khali chiza hiss khub tajrub mikan so i was just reading something today that was saying about the you know the the persian poet rumi um produced some of his poetry when he was in this this state of of joy of excitement و رومی هم مثلا اینکه از اون شاعرای ایرانی که زمانی که مثلا توی حس خوبی بوده مثلا توی شعراش مثلا میشه متوجه شد مثلا خیلی هیجان و شادی اینا رو توصیف می‌کنه توی شعراش. Okay so I would say this is this is a real experience but it's something which is not religious it's a psychological experience. واقعیه ولی دینی نیست. یعنی چیزی نیست که قدرت روح القدس باشه، بلکه مثلا یه ذره حس حالت دقیقاً یه پدیده روانشناسی بهش میگن اینو. It's something that can be created when people um, sort of whip themselves up kind of create this energy or, or kind of draw on this energy through music and dancing and being with a group of people in this kind of exciting way and it's a kind of state of mind that's created. و دقیقا یک قدرت این مثلا یه جور حسی که اینگه مثلا شما زمانی که توی جمع قرامی یا حالا موسیقی که داره پلی میشه یا مثلا اون رقصی که اتفاق داره میشه این جور حسای خوشحالی باعث این داستان میشه That's very different from what the Bible teaches about the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit و خب این خیلی با اون چیزی که تا ما از راجع به اون قدرت موجزات ها رو رول بود صحبت میکنه Okay, time is definitely gone. So let's just summarize what we've covered today. God and Jesus gave miraculous powers to the first disciples. They were able to heal sicknesses, speak in foreign languages, even raise the dead. و مثلا زمان غیر سخن بگم و حتی شفا بدم بقیه رو and it was only the apostles who were able to pass those gifts on to other believers فقط هم رسول بودن که این قدرت داشتن اینو انتقال دادن به بقیه افراد and so when the apostles died those gifts were no longer passed on و زمانی که رسول الله مردن این قدرت دیگه استوب شد به کسی اجازه به کسی منتقل نشد God gave them for a limited period in order to build up the church in those early years and then once the church had been established those gifts passed away. این قدرت بهشون عطا شد که اون کلیسای اولیه ساخته بشه و بنا بشه و زمانی که ساخته شد اتفاقات دیگه رفت. And those gifts will reappear uh, in the kingdom. و دوباره توی پادشاهی خدا هم پدیدار خواهد شد. So if we come across people today who have Um, who, or who say that they have these gifts of the Spirit, we need to test that carefully to see whether it's true. And my belief is that those experiences that people have today, um, they are mistaken in saying that they are gifts of the Holy Spirit. و میگه به نظر من به تجربه خودم شد خود شده میگه میگه اونا مرتکب اشتباه دارن شما میگی مثلا میگه ما قدرت رول بوس در کنیم این صحبت Now does that mean that God is work is not working is God silent no به این معنی نیست که خدا دیگه الان نشسته که اینا استراد اینا کار نمیکنه God still works through his spirit today همچنان داره کارش انجام میده But he works in a different way to those in the first century ولی از یک طریق دیگه مختلف تر. So God still works through His Spirit to give us life. از طریق روح داره زندگی و حیات به ما میبخشه. 
God still works through his spirit through the angels to direct our lives and the things that happen to us. When we develop the mind of God and of Jesus in us, that is God's spirit at work in us. And God can still answer our prayers, whether we pray for him for help with sickness or other problems in our lives. So God's spirit is at work. But what's described as the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit is something that we don't experience at the moment. Okay, um, that brings things to a close. All right. So the first question is, uh, on the, uh, in resurrection days, all the people will speak in the same language or in a different language? So the first question is, are you or not? Um, good question, and I think you would perhaps get different answers from different brothers. <laughs> so in the Old Testament, it talks about um, uh, everyone being of one of one tongue or of one lip. Um, from memory, it's Zachariah, but I can't remember the verse. If somebody can help, that would be great. Um, but it, that, based on that verse, then uh, some people think that in the kingdom, everybody will speak one language. Richard, I think you're thinking of Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3, thank you. So not Zachariah, Zephaniah. Yeah. Okay, let's see, if, see who could find the, the verse first. Nine. Verse nine. Okay, now um, this says slightly different things in different uh, translations. Um, could somebody read it in the King James, in the Old English, please? I can do that, Richard. Thank you. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Okay, so it talks about uh, a pure language, so it's just one. Um, and it says about them all being together, you know, so it implies maybe one language. Okay, some, some translations um, uh, talk about it being purifying the lips, and it's not to do with uh, a language, it's about people speaking with purity, about people being honest and truthful in what they say. So some people look at that verse and say this indicates that there will be one language, one pure language in the kingdom. Uh, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> Um, and that's on the basis of Revelation chapter 5. Um, actually, uh, that's not the chapter I'm looking for. Oh yeah, sorry. Chapter chapter seven. Chapter seven. Hey, Revelation chapter seven. 
Um, okay, chapter seven, verse uh, nine. Um, says, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. آیه مکاشفه باب هفت آیه نو پس از آن نظر کردم و اینک جماعتی از این از هر ملت و تایفه و قوم و زبان پیش روی خود دیدم که هیچ کس آن را را نمیتوانست شماره کنم و همه پیش تخت در پیشگاه بره ایستاده بودم پس داریم میگه در قرار قوم های زیاد، تایفه های زیاد، ملت های زیاد، با زبان های مختلف زیاد Okay, so it mentions about these nations and languages um, in the kingdom Yeah, I just said that Okay, um, so uh, again, people interpret this differently uh, because it could be saying that these are the people who have come from these language groups, from these nations, but now they're all united together in one nation and language. So, you know, that's, that's another way of looking at it. Okay, that's my usual trick of giving a long answer when I could have probably made a short one or just said, we don't know for sure. <laughs> و بهتن جواب هم شنیم یه سه سوال ها واقعا میشه گفت به شنیم به قطعیت نمیشه گفت جوابشون میدونیم Alright, the next question is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 okay. What does it mean? Uh, oh, Alright Does the body die? So if the body dies, there is no other language to exist after we die. It's the it's the question in the chat box. But so all about you are in chat box in your person. Okay, my get just me, my just name, pass on the beginning to Rudy Dosh. Um, so, uh, so the body, yeah, the body dies, but then, um, if we turn to 1 Corinthians 15, um, it makes it clear that the body comes to life again at the resurrection and we still have bodies. Okay, we won't read it now, but if you want to have a look, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44. Okay. And we can think about the example of Jesus, that after his resurrection, he still had a body and he still spoke to people. So he still needed language. So, although the resurrection life will be very different from today, then lots of things which are part of our experience as being humans, so, you know, having a body, speaking, listening, we will still have when we are resurrected. Richard, I thought we don't have to be, we will not have this body. Uh, if we have this body, how we want to get rid of desire or how we want to get rid of uh, pain in, in our body. Till now, I thought we get rid of this body later. Let's, let's, sorry. 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 I think what we what we have to get clear on is, yes, our our body, our um, let's okay. The easiest thing will be to actually look at the look at the scriptures, won't it, rather than me trying to paraphrase it. So let's come to one Corinthians fifteen. Okay. Um, so we know that the bodies that we have now are weak and sinful and causes to die. Okay, so, um, so we know that the bodies that we have now are weak and sinful and causes to die. 
محکوم به مرگ Okay, and so if we come to 1 Corinthians 15, um, let's look at verse 42, um, 43 and 44. How many people have been asked before? I'm going to read it again. First Corinthians 15, verse 43 to 44. It says, So when it comes to the Sorry. Yeah, okay, you read, yeah. آنچه برمیخیزد فساد ناپذیر در ذلت کاشته می شود در جلال برمیخیزد در ضعف کاشته می شود در قوت برمیخیزد بدن طبیعی کاشته می شود بدن روحانی برمیخیزد اگر بدن طبیعی وجود دارد بدن روحانی نیز وجود دارد Okay notice um, it, I'm not sure if this comes across in Farsi from what I remember it's a bit different but in in the Greek and the uh, and in the English, it talks about the body being sown in the ground, like a seed. Yes, so, it does. Yeah, okay. So if we think about that idea, when you plant a seed, the seed dies in the ground and then grows into a new plant. I know going to say, دانه در حد توصیف شده که زمانی که یک دانه رو میکاریم تو زیر خاک میمیره و وقتی میاد بیرون دوباره زنده شده در حد. And so that's the picture we're given that our the the body that we have now which is dying and you know uh, sinful and weak is buried in the ground when we die um, but something from that grows into a new life uh, when we're raised from the dead. بدنی که در ما الان داریم چیزی که محکوم به مرگ و میمیره ولی چیزی که از اون بیرون بیاد در واقع چیزی که فساد ناپذیره زنده میمونه و زندگی داره Now I guess the question is is what what sort of life is that and what Paul says here is there is a natural body and there is also a spiritual body و چیزی که حالا پولس اینجا داره میگه چیزی که یک بدن طبیعی داریم و یک رو بدن روحانی So it's still a body but it's a different body to what we had before. It's not a body which is weak, that's sinful. It's a body which is spiritual and glorifies God and does things in the right way. And so there's still a connection with the person who we were before and the new life that we're given when Jesus is, when Jesus comes back. Let's just also come to verse 53 and 54. Because this gives us another picture of what the resurrection is like. It says the perishable, so that's our body now, must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. آیه 53 و 54 چون این فساد پذیر زیرا این بدن فساد پذیر باید فساد ناپذیر را بپوشد و این بدن فانی باید به بقا آراسته شود چون این فساد پذیر فساد ناپذیری را پوشید و این فانی بقا آراسته شد آنگاه آن کلمه مکتوب به حقیقت خواهد پیوست که میگوید مرگ در پیروزی فرو ولیده شده است so this yeah this talks about the, the new life the resurrection life being like a, a new piece of clothing that we put on و انگار مثلا یک لباس تازه که یه خرقه جدیدی که به تن می‌کنیم ما it's it's still us we're still human in a sense but instead of having the life which is corrupt and sinful and weak that's taken off and we're putting on a new clothing which is the resurrection life و در واقع هنوز همون خود ما این با یک زندگی جدید ولی به جای اون بدن فاسد و دقیقت با اون گفتم هوی و حوثاش یک بدن تازه است بدن که دیگه فسادپذیری نداره به بقا راسته شده و این جو داستانا 
And again, that was the experience of Jesus, wasn't it? You know, that body that was weak and sinful, not sinful, but weak and prone to temptation, um, died. When he was raised to life, he still had a body, but it was different. دقیقا مثل ایسا مسیح بدنش, بدنش مثل ما بود بدنی که دقیقا اون افکار رو داشتش مثل ما وصفسم شده ولی زمانی که مرد و رحصاقی شد دیگه اونجوری نبود And we can see how Jesus' body after the resurrection was both the same and different by thinking about the things that Jesus did و میتونیم تفاوتش رو متوجه با کاره که ایسا مسیح بعد از رحصاقیزش انجام داد یا قبل رحصاقیز انجام داد و میتونیم تفاوت So Jesus was able to appear in a room. He was able to walk through doors. Okay, so he had something that was very different from a, a normal human body. But at the same time, sometimes when people saw him, they didn't know he was Jesus. They thought he was just a normal person. و یه وقتی مثلا یه چیزی که مثلا وقتی مردم میدنش فکر میدنش که انسان رو معمولی ما متوجه نمی شدند که ایسای مسیح And in fact in, in John's gospel Jesus actually sits and eats with the disciples to show them that he wasn't a spirit but he was still a person with a body even though it was a, an immortal glorified sinless body و حتی توی انجیل میخونیم توی یکی از اون چالش انجیل میخونیم زمانی که ظاهر میشه شاگرداش میشه باشون قضا میخوره و نشون میده که همچنان یه بدن داره که میتونه چون میگن کارهای هضم انجام بده و بدنی که روح نبوده دقیقا اینو میخواد بهش ثابت کنه so we can see that that gives us a picture of what it will be like for us to be resurrected there will be some things that will be the same that we will still presumably look a little bit like we look now um, that we will still have bodies, we will still be able to eat, um, we will still talk to people like Jesus did, but that will be um, enhanced with uh, a strength and power and wisdom from God that will take away all that weakness and death. We still have the same body, but we don't have any other things and other things. We don't have any other things, but we don't have any other things from God. When Jesus died, where did he go? And when we die, where we, where we go? Um, so all that's when he was born, where was he born? Where was he born? Okay, um, I can answer that as a, with a short answer this time. Uh, oh. To the grave. Yeah, great, thank you. <laughs> Jesus went to the grave and stayed there till he raised from the dead. And we also go to the grave and we will stay there until we're raised from the dead. و عیسی مسیح زمانی که مرد به رفت توی قبر در حقیقت دفن شد و زمانی که ما مریم هم اتفاق افتاد و منتظر می تا روز رستاخیز که از مرگ بلند شد. Alright, so the next question is Alright, first continue chapter 12. Now. Okay. And What does it mean the spirit? The first question is what does the uh, the word spirit mean in first Corinthians 12? It means Holy Spirit, you mean? Yeah? Yes. But uh Sora Manzura's Ruchi to have a grand temple with our Zaki Michel Rule or do Okay, and and we can find that out from verse three uh and then verse four. It, so it says, verse 3, it talks about speaking by the Spirit of God. Then it says, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, the same Spirit. So yeah. in this chapter, then Spirit of God and Holy Spirit and Spirit mean the same thing. They don't everywhere in the Bible, but in this chapter, it's the same thing. And in the And the next question is about in verse 10. In my, in my Bible, it's in the middle. Uh, recognition of the uh, spirits. Do you oh. have this one? Yeah, good point. And the question is about the question of 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 the question
Yes, so that's a good point because uh, that is a, a, a different use of the word spirit, isn't it? And we can see that, first of all, from the fact that we've had, we've, it's been talking about one spirit, and then it's talking about spirits, plural. So this is definitely something different. و اگه دقت کنید خب گفتیم می سوال خیلی خوبیه و اینکه داریم این اول راجع به روح داره صحبت می‌کنه به صورت مفرد و توی آیه 10 داریم میگه تشخیص ارواح جمع بسته. Now I think um, Jonathan last week pointed out that the spirit the word spirit is used to mean different things in different contexts. و آیات مشه بعد از جانتون هفته پیش گفتش که توی متن‌های مختلف اسم معنی مختلف برداشت میشه. And one of the uses of spirit in the Bible is to talk about the, the teachings of, of people. So it talks about test the spirits, which means test those different views, those different teachings that are around. And so in this verse, in verse 10, when it's talking about the ability to distinguish between spirits, I understand that to mean this is people who have the wisdom to listen to the different teachings that were perhaps being taught among the among the believers some of which were true and some of which were false. تشخیص ارواح یعنی ارواح به معنی که مثلا افرادی که مثلا قدرت رو رو گذاشتن میشستن بین مردم و تشخیص دادن کدوم تعلیم درسته و کدوم اشتباهه. And so that was a gift that God gave people to listen to those different teachings. and to know which were true and to confirm yes this person is speaking the truth this teacher is true no that teacher is speaking something false okay good questions If you have any more, feel free to WhatsApp them onto the, well, to me um, or to Amir or contact us somehow. Um, I will also send out the notes uh, from the course on WhatsApp because there were a couple of points that we didn't, uh, we, we didn't get quite enough time to look at. Well, if you have any questions, please send me a message to the group and you can ask me a question and answer me. یه سری از چیزا رو نتونستیم روز بگیم توی کلاس وقت نشد اسلایدش رو واسه تون توی یک گروه میذاریم okay, um, let's bring things together with a prayer با دعا تمام میکنیم کلاس رو Lord God we thank you that we can see your spirit at work that we know that you speak to us through your words the Bible that you guide us in our lives that you listen to our prayers and that you bring blessings to us according to your will. And we pray that soon the age will come when those gifts of your spirit will be poured out again. When those who are raised from the dead will be filled with your spirit and will be able to once again perform those miracles and speak to all nations and bring healing to this world. So we thank you for these gifts that you have promised and we pray that they will soon be poured out with the coming of your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.